Ernesto, what is your favorite nerdy random medical fact? Favorite nerdy random medical fact? Um, well, I, again, my infectious disease background. I, I have been fascinated by bubonic plague my entire career. And one of the most amazing facts about bubonic plague is the fleas. Um, so during the Middle Ages, of course, bubonic plague wiped out massive sections of Europe, um, up to 50% in some areas. Um, and one of the reasons why is because the fleas actually are starving. So what happens when the flea gets infected with the plague bacillus, the, uh, I think it's the LPS, the lipopolysaccharide on the surface of the, of the plague bacillus, mixes with the salivary contents, um, the, the, the digestive contents of the flea, and creates an amalgam. It's almost like a glue. And the flea gets basically a GI tract obstruction. And so the, the fleas are, are starving. And so what the fleas are doing is they're biting like crazy because they're starving, which is part of what drove the plague uh, during the Middle Ages. The fleas are just biting like crazy, and everybody's getting bitten by fleas with plague bacillus, and lots of them are dying. Just like the old nursery rhyme says, we all fall down. Well, I guess now we can't really avoid talking about it, but how has your specialty been impacted by COVID? Um, the biggest impact from COVID has been the decrease in volume. I think many folks recognized early on that one of the most dangerous places to be with your child or without your child is in an ER because that's where COVID's going to be. The sick people are going to be there, they're going to have COVID, and they're going to be infecting the entire area. So most people figured out pretty quickly to stay away from the ER if they didn't really need to be in the ER. So our volumes plummeted. Uh, COVID hit Augusta in mid-March, and by mid-April we were down to, on some shifts we were seeing only six to ten patients in a shift, which is just eerie for us. I mean, that's, uh, there's, there, there's just no... We don't see six to ten on a day or evening shift ever in normal times, but there were some day shifts where I saw less than ten patients on a day shift, and I just uh, we'll never see it again. I hope we don't ever see it again. This is not a good thing for the patients or for us, but the 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 drop in volume has been remarkable. Okay, so we've talked a lot about life inside the hospital. How about your life when you clock out? So, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Oh, I'm a golfer. That's why I live in Augusta. Uh, and I have a golf group that I play with. Um, my buddies and I, there's about 20 of us, uh, we belong to a club here in Augusta, and we refer to ourselves as the dew, sweep, dew sweepers because we are the first group off the tee every Saturday and Sunday. We tee off winter, summer, spring, fall, doesn't matter what time of year it is, as long as the temperature's over 32, we're teeing off, and there's always dew on the ground. And so the dew sweepers are out there every morning, and I love it. Do you have a significant other or any kids? Yes, I uh, have a lovely wife, Wajma, um, who is Afghan native, and uh, um, uh, our son, JJ. Um, she has several children by previous marriage, and so do I. So we have a total of six. Um, but JJ is the only one that lives with us at this point. Does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, I think that starts in medical school, as a matter of fact. That, that a lot of people, uh, including my grandmother, I can remember distinctly, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a year or two into medical school, and she's asked me all these complicated questions about her, her medical conditions. Um, yeah, we get questions a lot from our families. What's the weirdest question a family or friend has asked you then? Well, my grandmother again, I guess. Um, I can remember her giving me this, you know, well, I've got this symptom and this symptom and this symptom and this symptom. What's, what's, what's causing that? And so, of course, I haven't done a history, a full history. I haven't done a physical exam. I haven't got any vital signs on her at all. And she's asking me to make a diagnosis based on about two or three sentences. Uh, that, and, and unfortunately, the non-medical world thinks that, that that's all that, that's required. Just, you know, here's a couple of random symptoms. What's wrong with me? Well, it doesn't work that way. We need a little bit more information than that. Actually, we need a lot more information than that. So, do you have any pets? Yes. And here's one of them. Murph is my cat dog. He's more like a dog than a cat. Friendliest cat you'll ever meet. And Molly is our calico. She's around here somewhere. She's more like a typical cat. Um, she either purrs for you or she bites you. 
Uh, but Murph has never bitten anybody in his life. He never will. He's just too nice a guy. So I guess that answers the next question. Are you a dog or a cat person? Oh, I love dogs too. But uh, my wife and I find that, that uh, our lifestyle, we like to travel. And so with our lifestyle, it's much easier to do that with cats back home than it is with dogs. So right now, we don't, we don't have any dogs in the house. But I've had dogs for a good chunk of my life also. What would be your favorite animal, not a dog or a cat? Uh, well, I'm well, sort of like a cat anyway. Tiger. I mean, <laughs> I think they're just the most magnificent creatures in the world. Um, and someday, I hope to see one in the wild. But um, there's not too many of them left out there anymore. But tigers are pretty cool animals. If you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, well, that's a tough one. Um, oh, maybe it's not. Jesus Christ. I would have dinner with Jesus. That would, actually, that's an easy question. I would have dinner with Jesus. <laughs> what would you guys be eating then? Uh, loaves and fishes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's your favorite dish to eat? Uh, I'm a big octopus fan. And uh, my wife and I are big lamb fans, so either octopus or lamb. Any favorite restaurants around here? Yeah, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the French Market Grill. Great restaurant. There are two of, them, two of them in town. They are internationally known because of the masters. People come in and know French Market, but it's, it's a great restaurant. Great menu. Coffee or tea or soda? Tea. Hot tea. How much water should you be drinking every day? Uh, several liters. Two, two to four liters a day is, is a good, good goal to be shooting for. What's your favorite meal from the hospital cafeteria, if, if you have one? Uh, well, I do use the hospital cafeteria quite a bit. Um, I generally go for their wraps. Um, I, just for the, the health side of things, I usually do like a turkey wrap, something like that. Something relatively healthy. What's your favorite healthy snack? Um, I like um, pistachios. Okay. What's your favorite guilty snack or cheat meal? Oh, that's easy, pizza. It's such 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 easy fallback, but but um, um, and there's so many good types. Um, we we were in Chicago with JJ last year at a, a national competition, and uh, we I, I introduced my wife and JJ to the joys of Chicago deep dish. There's just nothing like it. Can't get it anywhere else except Chicago. Not the real Chicago deep dish. Speaking of pizza, and I guess be prepared to be judged by the internet on this one. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh my gosh, pineapple on the pizza? Yep. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. As the, as the Valley Girls used to say back in the 80s, gag me with a spoon. No, no, I, no, no. <laughs> no. So Apple or Android? Uh, Apple. Any artistic hobbies you keep up with? Artistic hobbies. I like to write, um, and I wouldn't say I necessarily... Uh, do a whole lot in the way of public. I don't do any publishing other than the medical publishing that I do. But uh, yeah, I like to write. I'm not. I'm not a an artist in the sense of doing sculpture or or drawings or paintings. What kind of music do you listen to on shift or whenever you're doing procedures? First choice by far is Beatles, because there's just such a massive array of music there. It's just an incredible output they had. Um, but um, 60s, 70s, 80s rock and roll is what I like. Uh, I'm a big Stones fan also, but, but you know, as good as the Stones were, they just don't measure up to the Beatles. Do you ever listen to music to pump you up before a shift? I listen to the Beatles when I'm driving in every day. There's a, the Beatles channel on Sirius is what I like to listen to. Perfect. So what's the best way that you relax after a long day? Uh... The nurses know this, the answer to this question. I talk about this all the time, especially when I'm doing an evening. In fact, almost exclusively when I'm doing an evening shift. If I get home at 1 or 2 in the morning, I'm all amped up from the shift. Um, there's been a lot of adrenaline flow in most cases, especially if I'm getting home at 2. There's been something going on that's kept me there. And I find the best way to relax at night is a glass of white wine, usually Chardonnay, and a bowl of butter popcorn. That combination sounds weird, but it is so good at 2 o'clock in the morning. Is, are you a night in or go out on the town kind of person? Uh, 
Probably a little bit of both. Um, I, 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 I like to get out with my wife. Um, and again, we, we like to travel. Um, so given the choice between staying in and going out, if we have a choice to go out, I, we like to go out. You're an indoors or outdoors person? Oh, very much an outdoors person. I've been a runner since I was 10. I've been a golfer since I was 12. And then do you prefer beach or mountains? Mountains. So does my wife. She's from Kabul. She used to, used to have in the Himalaya mountains in the distance. So yeah, we're, we're mountain people. Would you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? I consider myself an introvert. Was that personality trait a factor in you choosing your specialty? Uh, not really. Um, one of the things that I found was that my degree of introversion uh, came down dramatically um, once I got into my residency. What I found was that um, during a residency, you have to be able to talk to your residents, the other fellow residents, your, the nurses, the patients. And so um, my degree of introversion uh, largely disappeared after, uh, after my residency. So I am much less introverted now than I used to be. All right. Thank you so much for your time. As as we wrap up, I want to ask a few reflective questions. Okay. Um, as as you've already given some great insight into the field um, for pre med students out there. So, what do you what did you think you were going to be uh, when you grew up as a kid? Oh, I mean the usual stuff. I was going to be a fireman. I was going to be an astronaut. Um, I don't think I ever spent a whole lot of time thinking about being a doctor when I was a, a young kid. I didn't really gravitate towards medicine until about midway through my college years. My original thought in college was to go into politics until my parents pointed out that in order to survive in politics or to thrive in politics, you have to have the ability to be able to stick a knife in somebody's back and then twist it. And they, I remember distinctly the conversation. They said, do you really think you can do that? And I thought, no, I don't think I can do that. So politics went out of the, out of the picture. And uh, I had already been interested in medicine to a certain degree, so I just kind of kept on going in that direction. Is there a different specialty you think you could have done? Yeah, I think any of a number of different specialties. I, I think I would have been fine in internal medicine. It's just that I prefer taking care of kids. Um, I, I, there are certain features about kids that, that make the specialty attractive to me. Um, I expect a child to cry when they're hurting. I expect a child to be immature. I don't expect adults to do that. And what I found unpleasant, I guess, is that a lot of adults have childish personalities. They're selfish, they're, they're, they're um, childish. Um, and um, I, I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend my time working with the kids because that's the way they're supposed to be. Uh, the other thing I like about the kids is, whereas there are a lot of adults that like being in the sick role for any of a number of reasons, kids don't want to be sick. Kids want to be out there playing with their buddies or watching TV or doing something, but they don't want to be sick. So their whole goal is to get better. And even when they've got an arm missing or they've got all their hair gone from their chemotherapy, the kids are still happy and playing. That is a really, really major attraction to me, to pediatrics. So if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Oh, boy. Uh, probably something in the business world. That would be my guess. Um, it's hard to say. I, I, I do love being outdoors. So, you know, part of me says I'd be, I'd be working in a, in a uh, nursery um, selling people shrubs and trees and flowers. Um, but I think probably I would have gone to business in some, some way. Maybe business running a nursery. <laughs> Were there any times that you doubted you would make it as a doctor? Oh, many times. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I almost lost my medical career when I was a junior in college. I had a summer job, and I was in, in a situation that was very, very um, difficult for me in a hospital. And thankfully, the surgeon saw that I was under major stress and took me aside and basically talked me down. Um, if he hadn't done that, I'm not sure I would have gone into medicine. I, I wish I could remember his name. I don't. 
many, many years ago, but that surgeon saved my career. Um, I came this close to quitting when I was a junior. Um, it's very, very stressful year. Very stressful. Junior year is the most stressful year of all. First semester freshman year and the entire junior year are stressful. And I came so close to quitting until I went to the student library on the internal medicine floor that I was working on. And I f saw some of my classmates. There were about 12 of my classmates there. And I walked in the room, and just by chance, the topic of discussion was quitting. And it turned out I wasn't the only one. We were all under stress. We weren't talking about it. Uh, and we weren't aware that the other folks were thinking the same thing. But we, one of our students, she was one of the best students in the class. She didn't, she'd actually packed her car with her belongings. She was heading out of Indianapolis um, to head home when her family talked her out of it and said, no, 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 stick it out a little bit longer. So, yeah, there are going to be times you're going to question your career choice during both pre-med and medical school years, even in your residency years. Um, am I glad I stuck with it? Absolutely. I don't have any regrets about choosing to go into medicine. If you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? Uh, waste. Uh, I, 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 it makes me sick to see all the waste we have in the medical world. Um, and part of that waste, and much, much of that waste, is due to knee-jerk medicine. Um, you know, symptom XYZ, the doc's in immediate response is to order a boatload of labs or x-rays or whatever. And what I try to teach in the ER... Uh, to the students and residents and fellows is don't be a knee-jerk doc. Think about what you're doing. If you need to order a lab, order a lab. If you need to order an x-ray, order an x-ray. But think about it. Why are you doing it? Is there a reason for this? If there's not a good reason for it, if you, if you can't give me a good reason why you're poking a child with a needle, do not poke that child with a needle. What can a medical student do right now to prepare to go into your specialty? To go into my specialty? Um, get as well grounded in general medical uh, concepts as you can and particularly work on history and physical. What I have found through the years is that when a student or a resident comes to me to staff a patient, almost without exception, if they've missed the boat, the reason they've missed the boat is because they have not taken a truly complete history or have, done, have not done a complete, truly complete physical exam. The history and physical is the most important tool you'll have with you for the rest of your career. It's why we spend so much time as, as medical students learning how to do a really thorough history and physical exam. Um, so, so if you're going to work on something, work on that. If you were to go back, would you change any of your experiences to get you where you are right now? You mean my training years, college, medical school, residency, that kind of? Mm -hmm. uh, would I change anything? Um, I'm glad I went to Indiana for medical school. I'm glad I was a resident at Medical College of Virginia. It was a great place to be. I'm glad I did my infectious disease fellowship. I wouldn't change that for anything. I'm glad I did the ED fellowship. I'm glad I took the jobs I did after I graduated from my, from my training years. Um, I, I, I don't think I would. I, I think that where I am today, I am very satisfied with where I am today because I think of, I, I made some good choices. I mean, I, I had a little bit of a, uh, a detour going into ID for a few years and then coming back out of it, but I didn't really come back out of it. So I don't, I don't consider that a mistake. It was just, it was a great place to be for a few years. So, no, I don't think I would change anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. All righty. And we are on question number 73. And finally, what would you say to the aspiring physician right now who's maybe a high schooler looking to be a doctor one day or maybe a college student um, maybe doubting themselves at the moment whether or not they can get into med school? What would you say to them? Well, um, <clears throat> It's a, it's a competitive specialty, a, 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 a competitive uh, uh, career to get into. Um, so a lot of people that want to become doctors can't because they can't get into medical school. Don't let that discourage you. If you want to be a doctor, work towards it. But what I would say to people at, particularly at the medical school and residency levels, 
um, seek first to understand. That is your primary goal in your learning. Understand what you're doing. Memorization is important in any career. And it's important in medicine as well. But in my opinion, understanding what we do and why we do things is far more important than being able to memorize um, the answer. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Wild. And you have a happy new year. Thank you very much, Andy. I'm glad you could come over. And uh, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.